a little, uh, you know, Kenko Grande is just uh, on, on the hill above Cusco. Uh, a little further north is Laco, which is another large outcropping um, here in the foreground of this picture. And there are three caves there with interesting uh, uh, solar effects. And uh, the, the southwest cave, I was standing inside, there's a light tube pointing down at an altar and I'm looking out through the light tube and uh, was able to photograph the moon crossing the path that the, uh, the, the light tube is oriented for. The northeast cave uh, has uh, the solar horizon, the sunrise effect. The, the sun has been coming from the right each day getting closer and closer to the June solstice and it stops right there and it's or oriented directly for this cave opening on the June solstice morning when the sun rises and the sun comes in illuminates this altar and the reflected sunlight much of the rest of the cave and then after that since that was a standstill then the sun sunrise starts moving back again toward the other solstice and the third cave is the most ornate of the three, the southeast cave. There's its entrance way, and there's you know, the sacred creature, the serpent there, uh, for the underworld in, in the cave. And it had another light tube. This one oriented uh, for the time of the, the zenith sun, when um, the sun is directly overhead. And it came down to this uh, nicely carved altar for the whatever ceremonies they were doing there. And this is also called the Temple of the Moon, so they would have used it then as well. And there's another picture of the sun illuminating the altar. Waka 44 is um, not too far from either one. It's a, a lesser known, more overlooked um, shrine. There's two carved stone circles, a big one here and a little one here. And they are oriented as a gauge for where to look for the solar horizon events. There, if you look on the tangential line that goes between the big and little one in this direction, it points to the June solstice sunrise, December solstice sunset. On this line to the December solstice sunrise, June solstice sunset, and then across the two, the equinox sunrise, equinox sunset. And as an example here, here's the big circle. There's the little one, there's the line between them pointing at the June solstice sunrise. The uh, Caspiwanka pillars, Caspiwanka is the palace of the um, Emperor Wanakapak. Uh, it's at the what, north, it's by Yorubamba, the modern village of Yorubamba, north on the north side of the Sacred Valley. But these two pillars are some of the only ones that survived that were set up to mark these uh, sunrise positions as viewed from this uh, sacred granite boulder in the center of the courtyard that um, they, they, that was in the palace grounds. And looking up on the, the, the Sarasewa Ridge, there's the two pillars. There's a little bit of uh, magnification there. There's uh, the natural view. And here is we're, we're approaching the June solstice sunrise. At first, will rise, the sun will rise over the right pillar. And then it'll continue the, the last few days toward the left pillar at the time of the actual solstice sunrise. And also from that same boulder, uh, looking in the direction of the December solstice sunrise is Cerro Inaraki, and, uh, on top of which uh, are these uh, three pillars that are oriented north and south. And Cerro Inaraki, when we went up there to uh, examine that, is uh, 4377 meters above sea level. Oriente Tambo. As, uh, if anybody's been to Machu Picchu, you pass through there on the way. It's uh, the, this magnificent set of uh, stone terraces are oriented for the, yeah, the chat's getting in my way again. They're oriented for the December, the December solstice sunrise in the opposite direction, the June solstice sunset. And the Inca Masana Noe in Tetambo has these uh, horizontal gnomons on the side of a wall. And they are oriented so at the time of the December solstice at local noon, light will come down, hit the 
gnomons and ins the shadows will insert in this notch and that would have been inserting in another notch here. Um, but the, that notch has been broken. So moving on to Machu Picchu, there, Machu Picchu is over here to the right and this, that's a sacred plaza in specific that I've got there. Then uh, down in the bottom of the gorge below is the river Niwatana and then the opposite ridge is uh, Yagtapada and this is the Sun Temple. I've, I've got those here because they're all on the axis of the June solstice sunrise, December solstice sunset. And here's, of course, a classic view of Machu Picchu. If anybody hasn't been there yet, you need to get there because it's just a, a phenomenally awesome, breathtaking place and no picture ever does it justice. But here's the sacred plaza that I was talking about right there. And the sacred plaza again, and there's the uh, June solstice, the sun rising over the backside of the sacred plaza. Also the Torreon at Machu Picchu, this window is oriented to admit light at the time of the um, June solstice sunrise. And also the Lyical Rise of the Pleiades can be viewed there as well. So here's the Intihuatana stone, very famous Machu Picchu, but I put that picture in here because on the opposite side of the gorge is the Yaktapada Ridge and the Yaktapada is where not only that sun temple, but in, in totally engulfed in the vegetation of the cloud, for, cloud forest, there's over 100 structures that are over there, part of the greater ceremonial uh, complex. So here is the Sun Temple at Machu Picchu, which they uh, keep clear. Uh, it's the only structure that's really kept clear. And I come back to this photo again and take note of the uh, stone channel that's between our feet because is in the left photo here, if you look that stone channel heading the other direction is pointing right at the sacred plaza. And then the Intihuatana is just off to the side. And then of course the sunrise and the Pleiades rise. What the Incas, they, they, uh, they believe that the sun, you know, as, as winter was approaching, which is what it does in June in the Southern hemisphere was obviously crossing the sky lower and lower. So they would pour ceremonial liquids into this channel uh, presumably uh, to uh, energize the sun. They thought the liquids were water was a great energizing power so to energize the sun. So it wouldn't just continue and disappear below the horizon that would rise up again. And of course, obviously, as you know, it will rise again, but the uh, ceremony worked well for them. That's the June solstice sun rising in the uh, right hand uh, photo there. And there's the June solstice sun <coughs> rise again. I talked about the river in Iwatana. That's a stone in deep in the gorge down below. And uh, it, it, you know, Hiram Bingham, who uh, was first wrote about Machu Picchu back around 1911 with National Geographic, he had found this, but no one really t understood why it was there until Yaktapata was found. Then it all of a sudden made sense that this is all a big ceremonial complex. There's other, other uh, um, carvings and such around the uh, river in Iwatana. And here we mapped out the, the, everything that was at the site. So anyway, back to the overall view, there's uh, Machu Picchu where the sacred plaza is, the river in Iwatana, the sun temple of uh, Yaktapada and the axis of the June solstice sunrise, December solstice sunset. And, and it's thought that it could be possible that another axis, there's the Overlook Temple of Yaktapada crossing the river Niwatana again and over Mount Machu Picchu. That would be on the equinox uh, axis for the equinox sunrise, equinox sunset. But it just shows that this whole area was a great ceremonial complex, not just the, the palace at Machu Picchu and those grounds, but the could be, you know, uh, ceremonies could have taken place going over to uh, Yaktapada as well. So anyway, the landscape was certainly filled with astronomy used in Inca culture. I found it um, most everywhere when I was doing my research at the 31 different sites that I examined. And the, uh, regarding the eight primary solar horizon events, the most prominent examples were for the June solstice sunrise, but then December solstice sunrise it wasn't far behind. 
And the two Incas, two of their primary annual festivals occurs at those two times of the year. So I, I've written about this and a lot more in my uh, book that Springer published, Astronomy of the Inca Empire. And um, my wife is a gifted artist. She did help, besides my research photos, helped me with 31 paintings, drawings, and maps to illustrate this painting she did of Machu Picchu in the night sky. And all those stars are accurately placed. But anyway, um, that's, that's where I will leave off today. And uh, hopefully, um, I've given you know people some you know some of you some ideas of uh, additional ways of uh, talking about astronomy and Inca astronomy, archaeoastronomy to uh, inspire students. And if anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer. Thank you very much, Steve. Uh, as a South American inhabitant, <laughs> I must say that uh, um, I suggest everybody to go to Peru and try to visit Machu Picchu and all the road between Cusco and Machu Picchu between, uh, because it's, a, it's a, an incredible experience. Whatever you say is not enough. And uh, all that you can show uh, is uh, spectacular, but uh, the personal uh, living is, uh, is completely different. To live in Machu Picchu is an uh, incredible uh, experience. Really, it's uh, one of the uh, best places in the world. A very special place. Very, very, very special place. I agree, absolutely. We promote that the people visit uh, a lot of places in the world in order to discover that all of us, we are very similar and we have very similar uh, feelings and motivations in our life. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, wonderful, Stephen. Very, very good. Thank you.